Hi there, and welcome to the All Around Growth Podcast. Before we get into the show today, I'd like to share with you a brief excerpt from what we will read before we hit the road on this morning's commute. And that sentence reads as follows. Believe you can structure your work around your goals, meaningful relationships, and your dreams and passions. Well, welcome to the show. This is another episode of the All Around Growth Podcast. My name is Rob Kaiser and I am your host. Today is Tuesday, December 28th, and this is episode number 253 of the podcast. This morning, I believe I outlined a new morning routine. This is uh, something I've been experimenting with, just a minor modification of sorts over the past few days during the holidays. And I very much like this. I'm reading all devotionals first thing in the morning after yoga, before taking a shower. And that gives me some time to reflect on what I've read and what might be the most suitable thing to share with you and subsequently utilize as fodder for discussion. So today, the selection of choice comes from The Rudder of the Day, written by Dan Miller, author of the book 48 Days to the Work You Love, and it is titled Divine Discontent. Don't ignore a subtle sense of unrest. It may be the key to finding the work and life you love. Ralph Waldo Emerson talked about this concept, the divine discontent. It is my belief that authentic vocational success is tied to our spiritual well-being, the identification of those inner gifts and talents that need to be used for us to feel fulfilled. Now I don't want to be this I don't want this to be so spiritual that we can't find real application, but work has to provide more than just an income. I see more and more people who are feeling misplaced, off track, or just the angst of feeling like they are not making a difference. With a desire to do something noble or significant, they are leaving lucrative positions in that search for more meaning and fulfillment. Often they are looking to discard a financially successful professional career path started on years ago. How does a person redirect from a position or profession seen as highly desirable by others? Emerson said this, quote, I see young men, my townsmen, whose misfortune it is to have inherited farms, houses, barns, cattle, and farming tools, for these are more easily acquired than got rid of. Better if they had been born in the open pasture and suckled by a wolf, than they might have seen with clearer eyes what field they were called to labor in." Close quote. Frequently, I see advantages given early in life that misdirect a person and leave him or her with a strong desire to change course in their 40s or 50s. The best medical, dentist, or law schools cannot provide enough benefit to provide a fulfilling career path if that path is not a match with the unique gifts of the person involved. The process of finding authenticity is very much an individualized and internal one. Expecting the government or corporations to provide fulfilling jobs is to reverse the process of finding one's vocation. A true vocation helps us grow as persons while we meet our own needs and address the needs of those around us. To have someone give you a job is likely to short circuit the process of finding your calling. Believe you can structure your work around your goals meaningful relationships, and your dreams and passions. Look inward to give shape to the work that is fitting for you, and the, ex and the application will appear. Expect change in workplace volatility to enhance your chances of creating meaningful work. 
I find that it is often in the midst of change that we find our true direction. Emerson adds, a foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds, adored by little statesmen and philosopher and divines. With consistency, the great soul has simply nothing to do. And as always, before we ask ourselves a couple questions that will provide some direction for today, and some direction for our discussion, or at least the thoughts I will share with you, hopefully which will provide some fodder for discussion in the Telegram chat, which you can join at t.me slash allaroundgrowth. We'll take a quote from the Bible. And today we read from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Happy is the man who too finds Oops, let's try that again, shall we? From the Bible, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, we read, Happy is the man who finds wisdom and who acquires understanding, for she is more profitable than silver, and her revenue is more profitable than gold. And finally, the questions... For direction for today are as follows. Can you identify an area of dis- divine discontent that is prompting you to make some changes? What can you do to act on that today? Good questions. This my friends, is an episode that is going to encourage me to be vulnerable. Vulnerable in the sense that I am going to share some detail about the divine discontent that I am experiencing in my own life. And vulnerable in the sense that I will be talking about my, my day job, not with specificity, but we did read that expect change and vol- let's again, let's try that again. Expect change and workplace volatility to enhance your chances of creating meaningful work. I find that it is often in the midst of change that we find our true direction. Now, for those of you who listen to the show with regularity, you know that I often speak of the actions we can take to overcome and manage more effectively the stresses in life. And what I'm going to talk about today is no different. It just so happens that it applies in the workplace. And while communication may be lacking in the workplace, and this is this seems to be an agreed upon sentiment across the board with everyone I talk to, yet the problem, the root cause, is never addressed and the problem remains. And this is the comfortable familiarity that is often discussed as well by myself and others whose content I use in my own processes of all-around growth. Because this is the case, and because decisions have been made and actions have been taken, I too 
have decided to respond by making decisions and taking action. Certain decisions have been made, and the long and short of it is my career goal and many other goals, okay? This is a little plug for the 2022 Goal Setting Workbook. I began working through this book on November 1st, 2021. I worked through it steadily and heavily and consistently for 14 days and identified my goals for 2022 during that time frame. On November 14th, I put them away and I didn't look at them for two weeks until December when I brought them out after the Thanksgiving holiday and I've been reflecting on them all month. And just this morning, I realized that I can make some modifications to those goals and have them clearly outlined by the first of the year ready to take action. And one of the goals that I recently modified was my career goal. And the career goal was relatively vague because I created it when I was upset and emotional. But after taking time, practicing patience, prayer. I've refined the goals with regard to my career. And my career is just one aspect of my life. Living a balanced life requires execution of the dreams and plans on the six other aspects of life. So I'm focusing my efforts. Anyways, I digress. We read, expect change and workplace volatility to enhance your chances of creating meaningful work. I find that it is often in the midst of change that we find our true direction. And it is this change, this I'm reluctant to say workplace volatility because that has an inherently negative tone. And I'm learning to reframe my perspective with my workplace after a very nice discussion recently with our office manager who I have gained a new respect for, a new appreciation for after some workplace environment changes over the past few years, I've learned to see things through a different lens and learned that my perspective and opinions towards her were actually not my own, that I was projecting the opinions of others onto her. And I apologized to her earlier this year and explained why that was the case and why I treated her that way, that I was sincerely sorry. She accepted my apology and forgave me. And that has helped decrease the feelings of workplace volatility because I've identified with specificity and done some root cause analysis on my own. as to why things are the way that they are. And I've grown to accept that I can't change people. And I really can't change much of anything in this life, but I can change myself. And I can change how I respond 
to circumstances that I find myself in. And I am learning that if the circumstances that I find myself in are not desirable, that I've been doing the work consistently for long enough that I have empowered myself to remove myself from those circumstances. And if the circumstances that I find myself in aren't those that are desirable or those that I want, then I will create and make new circumstances to find myself in. And that has been part of the plan with my career. I didn't fully know how I was going to do this, though. The idea was that I was going to have a, a significant change of mindset about my job, or I was going to have to leave my job. Now, that's an admirable idea to have, but it doesn't make for a very good goal. It's not a smart goal. It's not specific. It's not really measurable. Well, it is specific. It's not really measurable. Right? It, it is actionable. It's not time-bound. So, what do we do? Again, patience, time, prayer. That's why we do this in the way that we've done this. We start working on our goals for the next year, two months prior. We work on them, we sit on them, we process them, we run them through the mental digester, as an old boss of mine used to say. And in doing so, that allows us to gain clarity on what it is that we're working for and working towards. I can't simply expect a change in mindset without doing anything specific in order to facilitate that. So what I'm doing and what I'm working on this week, since it's a short week and we're actually closed for business, but the skeleton crew, operational crew is there. I am working on a proposal of how the department in which I work will operate since some decisions have been made in terms of who and when and how and why people will be staffed with me next year and uh, the following year is yet to the long game is not something that's being taken into consideration so this is something that I have been thinking about and I'm going to present some ideas that I have and um, we're gonna see how that goes so, I'm pausing because I'm not quite sure how to conclude. I wanted to reference something in the book one time, but I'm just going to set it down at the stop sign. It dawned on me this morning in conclusion, it dawned on me this morning that as terrible as things may seem, it doesn't necessarily mean that I can get comfortable with where I'm at. There can always be something that can be improved upon. It's 
it's been 10 years since I made the decision to move back here and begin living my life in a different manner. All I knew was that I wanted to do something more aligned, aligned with homesteading, permaculture, self-sufficiency. I was just learning about that. And I feel as though I've made good progress. The 2022 goal setting workbook, which I've begun to talk about incessantly, is helping me refine that progress even further with a three year plan, a one year plan, and ultimately things that we can do today. So I'm going to link to everything that I talked about today in the show notes. I would encourage you to check out the show notes. If you like what you hear, do that, check the notes, and share it on social media, share it with a friend, family member, or loved one. And that's it for today's show, guys. I sincerely appreciate you tuning in. I sincerely appreciate your participation in the Telegram chat. Again, for those who are unaware and not a part of it, I would encourage you to do so at t.me slash allaroundgrowth. It's the best way to stay in touch with myself and other core audience members who make the community exactly what it is. For that, I'm very grateful, guys. And I look forward to catching you in another episode tomorrow. This is Rob Kaiser, and thank you.